Cayenne pepper can counteract the metabolic slowing that accompanies weight loss and accelerate fat burning as a bonus. Ginger powder, over a dozen randomized controlled trials starting at just a quarter teaspoon of ground ginger a day showing significantly decreased body weight for just pennies a day, proven in placebo controlled trials to work, but you probably never heard about any of this because they can't make enough profit. If there were one piece of advice that best sums up the recommendations in my new book, or not my new book, I wrote a pandemic book in the meanwhile, and a new cookbook, but three books ago, and how not to die, um, uh, the, uh, the, the best piece of advice I have would be to wall off your calories. See, animal cells are encased only in easily digestible membranes, which allow the enzymes in our gut to effortlessly liberate the calories in a steak, for example. Plant cells, on the other hand, have cell walls that are made out of fiber, which acts as an indigestible physical barrier, so many of the calories remain trapped. Now, processed plant foods, however, fruit juice, sugar, refined grains, even whole grains, if they've been powdered into flour, have had their cellular structure destroyed, their cell walls cracked open, and their calories are free for the taking. But when you eat structurally intact plant foods, chew all you want, you're still going to end up with calories completely encapsulated by fiber, which then blunts the glycemic impact, uh, activates what's called the ileal break, um, and deliver, which uh, dials down your appetite and delivers sustenance to your friendly flora. So bottom line, try to make sure as many of your calories as possible, your protein, your carbs, your fat, are encased in cell walls. In other words, from whole intact plant foods. That's what nature intended to happen. Millions of years before we learned how to sharpen spears and mill grains or boil sugar cane, our entire physiology is presumed to have evolved in the context of eating what the rest of our great ape cousins eat, plants. The Paleolithic period, and we started using tools, only goes back about 2 million years. We and other great apes have been evolving since back in the Miocene era, more like 20 million years ago. So, for the first 90% of our hominoid existence, our bodies evolved on mostly plants. It's no wonder then that our bodies may thrive best on the diet we were designed to eat. So, maybe we should go back to our roots. <clears throat> With enough portion control, anyone can lose weight. You may lock someone to a closet. You can force them to lose as much body fat as you want. Chaining someone to a treadmill could have a similar effect. But, but what's the most effective weight loss regimen that doesn't involve calorie restriction or exercise or a felony? Well, I have scoured the medical literature and all the randomized controlled trials. And the single most successful strategy to date is a diet of whole plant foods. The single most effective weight loss intervention like that ever published in the peer-reviewed scientific literature, a whole food plant-based diet. That works better than anything else studied to date. And no wonder, given what we just learned um, about uh, uh, cell walls, fiber, um, and I also go and talk about branching amino acids and other things um, in the book and in a longer version of this lecture, but I really wanted to get to everyone's questions. I mean, we've known for more than 40 years that those eating predominantly plant-based diets weigh on average about 30 pounds less than the general population, but you don't know if it's the diet itself until you put it to the test. In 2017, a group of New Zealand researchers published the Broad Study, a 12-week randomized control trial in the poorest region of the country with the highest rates of obesity. Overweight individuals were randomized to receive either standard medical care or semi-weekly classes offering advice and encouragement to eat a low-fat diet centered around fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and legumes, which are beans, split peas, chickpeas, and lentils. Uh, that's all it was, just empowerment with knowledge. No meals were provided. The intervention group was merely informed about the benefits of plant-based eating and encouraged to incorporate it into their own lives. No significant change to the control group, but the plant-based group, even without any restrictions on portions and being able to freely eat all the healthy foods they wanted, lost an average of 19 pounds by the end of the three-month study. 19 pounds of respectable weight loss. Yeah, but what happened next? I mean, at the end of those 12 weeks, class was dismissed and no more instruction was given. The researchers were curious uh, to see how much weight the subjects had gained back after being released from the study. So everyone was invited back at the six-month mark to get reweighed. Uh, the plant-based group had left the three-month study 19 pounds lighter, but after 12 months, they were only down about 27 pounds. They got even better. Uh, the plant-based group 
had been feeling so good, both physically and mentally, had been able to come off so many of the medications that they were sticking with the diet on their own and the weight had continued to come off. Okay, but what about a year later? I mean, even in studies that last a whole year where people are coached to stay on a particular diet the entire time, um, by the end of the year, any initial weight loss in the first few months tends to kind of creep on back. The broad study only lasted three months, yet after it was all over, those who had been randomized to the plant-based group not only lost dozens of pounds, they kept it off. They not only achieved greater weight loss of six and 12 months than any other comparable trial. That was months after the study had already ended. A whole food plant-based diet achieved the greatest weight loss ever recorded compared to any other intervention published in the medical literature. You can read the record-breaking study in full for free at nature.com slash article slash NUTD 2173, or you can just point your phone camera at the screen and pick off the QR code. Any diet that results in reduced calorie intake can result in weight loss. I mean, dropping pounds isn't so much the issue. The problem is keeping them off. And the key difference between plant-based nutrition and more traditional approaches to weight loss is that people are encouraged to eat ad libitum, meaning eat as much as you want. No calorie counting, no portion control, just eating. The strategy is to improve the quality of food rather than restricting the quantity of food. If you put people on a diet packed, with fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and beans, allow them to eat as much as they want, they end up eating about 50% fewer calories than they might have otherwise, just as full on half the calories. Uh, wait, how could you keep people satisfied cutting more than 1,000 calories out of their daily diets? By eating more high-bulk, low-calorie-density foods, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, legumes, and beans, and fewer calorie-dense foods like the meats, cheeses, sugars, and fats. But it may not just be on the calories inside of the equation. Those even more plant-based appear to be effectively burning more calories in their sleep. The resting metabolic rate of those eating more plant-based may be 10% higher or more, a boost in metabolism that can translate into burning up hundreds of extra calories a day more without doing a thing. Eating more plant-based, you burn more calories just being alive, just existing. So no wonder why those who eat more plant-based tend to be slimmer. Start packing your diet with real food that grows out of the ground. The pounds should come off naturally, taking you down towards your ideal weight. But what about ketogenic diets? Body fat loss actually slows down when you switch to a ketogenic diet because your body starts cannibalizing its own protein. Uh, just looking at the bathroom scale, though, the keto diet seems like a smashing success, losing less than a pound a week on the regular diet to Boom, three and a half pounds within seven days after switching to keto. But what was happening inside their bodies told a totally different story. On the ketogenic diet, the rate of body fat loss was slowed by more than half. So most of what they were losing was water, but they were also losing protein, also losing lean mass. That may help explain why the leg muscles of CrossFit trainees placed on a ketogenic diet can shrink as much as 8% within two months. Of course, even if keto diets work, the point of weight loss is not to fit into a skinnier casket. Right? People whose diets even tend to trend that way appear to live significantly shorter lives. On the other hand, even just drifting in the direction of eating more healthy plant foods associated with living longer. Those going the other way, though, those starting out more plant-based but then add meat to their diet at least once a week or more appear to double or triple their odds of diabetes, stroke, heart disease, and weight gain, uh, but may also suffer an associated 3.6 year drop in life expectancy. That's going from no meat to just once a week meat or more. Low carb diets have been shown to impair artery function and worsen heart disease whereas whole food plant-based diets have been shown to actually reverse heart disease. That's what the Ornish used. So what appears to be the most effective weight loss diet just so happens to be the only diet ever proven to reverse, weight, to reverse uh, heart disease in the majority of patients. If my grandma didn't have to die like that, no one's grandma has to die like that. I mean, if that's all a plant-based diet can do, reverse the number one killer of men and women, uh, shouldn't that kind of be the default diet to prove otherwise? 
and the fact that it can also be so effective in preventing, arresting, reversing other leading killers like type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure would seem to make the case for plant-based eating simply overwhelming. Uh, only one diet has been shown to do all that, a diet centered around whole plant foods. We don't have to mortgage our health to lose weight. The single healthiest diet also appears to be the most effective diet for weight loss. After all, permanent weight loss requires permanent dietary change. I mean, healthier habits just have to become a way of life. And if they're going to be alive long, you want them to lead to a long life. Thankfully, the single best diet for proven for weight loss may just so happen to be the safest, cheapest way to eat for the longest, healthiest life. Thank you so much. I will now move on to questions. Let me see. I think I, oh, I have a, a few more um, kind of uh, promotional slides. If anyone's interested, of course, everything's free. Um, you can subscribe to our newsletter and get uh, all the new videos and stuff. Um, we have a free evidence-based eating guide, which is kind of takes my books and distills them into kind of short form. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, I have an, uh, a free app on uh, iPhone and uh, Android called Dr. Greger's Daily Dozen, which encourages people to eat all the healthiest of healthy foods. And oh, and there's the book I've been talking about this whole time, How Not to Diet. Um, check it out at your local public library. <laughs>